Imagine a constant melody running through your very being. A personal theme song, if you will. A song that, if anyone listened to it, no matter the differences in your mind to theirs, if they just listen to it, they can understand your very self. As you may guess, I am a very musical person. I sing all the time, I dance randomly, I play multiple instruments and write my own songs. My friends can tell my mood based on if I'm humming or not. I've been in choir all throughout middle school and am in the varsity mix choir here at my local high school. And of course my Spotify rap consisted mainly of show tunes and 70s classic rock. Overall, I don't think I would be able to survive a day without music in my life. But a question I've been asking a lot is, why do people like their favorite songs? Why? The usual responses I get are things like, it's catchy, or it's a vibe, and while all these responses make sense and are completely true, I wasn't satisfied. I still can't stop wondering why. It dawned on me that maybe we enjoy our favorite songs because we are searching for ourselves in them, something that feels very similar to our own original song, the one that's always playing in the back of our minds. That might be why we can have a favorite song for a while and find a new favorite so quickly. We might realize that this new song is even closer to what we want others to hear about ourselves. Think of your favorite song. Do you feel in some way it has shaped you? I know mine definitely has. Music has been held to the standard throughout time that in order to create something beautiful, you have to be an expert. What the majority of people do not understand is why musicians even create music. My understanding is that creating music is a simple and vulnerable form of self-expression. Therefore, if you need an easy way to express yourself and your emotions, you can create music. If anyone just sat down at a piano and started to play, I have no doubt that they could create music worth listening to. This is because we all have our own unique way of seeing the world, which can affect the way we look at and understand complex things to the pace at which we can walk and talk. We all march to the beat of our own drums because I believe we all have our own unique soul song that we live by. There are verses, choruses, and all the parts that make up the song being created throughout our lives, with a bridge being the final thing we come across before seeing the unseen. What we cannot see. There are a lot of things we cannot see when it comes to music and being musical, like each individual's unique song being created throughout their lives. Wouldn't it be amazing to see what that looks like? Well, now we can. With new technology tracking how the brain forms the thought, scientists can expand on this idea and then figure out how and why we process music and how it affects us. There are still many things about the brain that have yet to be discovered. The key word there is yet, but they're working on that. One of the reasons holding specialists back is stated in an article by researcher Vivian Lamb saying, we still don't understand the basics. This makes sense, right? Because people learn to walk before they can run. Unless you were just born to run like Bruce Springsteen. Fortunately, our basics are already expanding. Like how a new technology called the sniffer is a happy medium when it comes to tracking the thought process of how a thought forms. Before, this process was either too broad or too specific. But now with technological advancements, we can see this process in action. Once we understand this, we can then understand how and why we develop who we are, and if music plays a part. You might be thinking, wait, what does this research about tracking thoughts have to do with music? Well, I'm glad you didn't ask, because I believe our thought process stems from how we live, which can be affected by what music we listen to. Once we understand this, we can then understand how music affects us. According to Norman Weinberger's article titled, Music in the Brain, when a person listens to music, the brain's response involves a number of senses outside those of hearing, including areas normally involved in other kinds of thinking. A person's visual, tactile, and emotional experiences all affect where the brain processes music. In other words, when two people listen to the same song, one person might be reflecting on their memories, while the other person might be experiencing different emotions. However, both people are reflecting inward on themselves and how it resonates with their view of the world. To summarize, we, as individual humans, process music in different places in our brains. This can affect our own definition of ourselves and how we think by just listening to music. In Donald Hodge's article titled, How and Why Does Music Move Us?, a system called the Default Mode Network, DMN for short, is a set of interconnected regions in the brain that becomes less active when you are paying outward attention to something, but is more engaged inward, such as during introspection and mind wandering. Scientists often call it the resting state. 
This network was specifically created for the type of thinking that is often similar to the, the dream state. Now let's get back to our metaphor of inner songs for a moment longer. Our inner songs are simple at first because we all start out simple. Over time, this melody becomes something different, but it is still yours. There might be new things added, but they slowly melt back into the main song. As the song keeps forming throughout your life, it is the constant beat of your own drum that keeps it going. It is our own personal experiences throughout life that create this masterful melody. Back to the article I mentioned earlier by Donald Hodges, a study was conducted with young adults in music. Participants reported preferences for a specific type of music and identified a personal all-time favorite piece as well. The researchers played various music of all genres as well as the participants reported favorite piece and researched the brain's activity in the DMN. The discovery was that the brain lit up in the DMN during songs that the participants liked. The participants re were reflecting on themselves during these songs and were focused inward and something resonated with their inner song, their inner self. So, at the end of the day, isn't it fascinating just how much music impacts and shapes us? I, for one, cannot wait to discover more of the wondrous things our brains can do. In fact, why would it all? The next time you hear your favorite song, try to look at yourself in that moment and think, what am I thinking about right now? Your answer just might surprise you. Maybe even try with all different kinds of songs and see where your brain takes you, because it is truly amazing the things we cannot hear.